In our previous section, we talked about the interesting but somewhat outdated Frankfurter School. Let's discuss two other, more modern schools, the Birmingham and the Toronto School. Like the Frankfurter School, the Birmingham Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies, championed by Stuart Hall, was also very much interested in power structures, communicated through pop culture. A central theme in the Birmingham School was the theory of hegemony, the core idea of which is again that pop culture communicates the dominant cultural framework. This framework, per definition, even without actually being artificially designed that way, communicates that dominant power structure, who is in power, what the rules are, who to obey, what is considered good behavior, etc. This cultural hegemony appears implicitly in all carriers of pop culture. Literature, songs, movies, game shows, soap operas, billboards, commercials, newspapers, etc. So even without knowing it, we are constantly being programmed with rules and truths that benefit the status quo. In later years, the theory of hegemony lost somewhat of its importance. The important scientist Fisk, for instance, takes a very different approach. He sees the worth of pop culture in its universal appeal. The fact that many people respond to a certain music album is an indicator of its cultural quality. It is, in other words, in sync with the dominant social reality. You can see that Fisk actually sees popularity as an indicator of quality. Quite a difference from the Frankfurter School that regarded pop culture as an oppressive tool designed to keep us ignorant and passive. According to Fisk, if a movie appeals to millions of people, it is culturally closer to us than an elitist theater performance that only a handful of people visit and appreciate. Note that this way of looking at quality actually gives a lot more power to the audience. It assumes that if many people like something, it has cultural worth. A very important alternative to the Birmingham School is the Toronto School. This approach focuses more on the channels of communication, the media themselves. Marshall McLuhan is the most important scientist in this school of cultural studies. His famous quote is, the medium is the message. He meant that culture is influenced more by the characteristics of a medium than by the actual content. The cinema, for instance, is all about the experience of going to a theater. Perhaps you go on a date with someone, buy popcorn, wait for the movie to start, talk about the previews, sit in the dark together, etc. All of this is made possible by the particularities of the channel. You have probably experienced something like this yourself, but do you still remember the specific movie it was you saw? You could just as well uh, see the movie at home. It saves a lot of money and you can pause it if you need to go to the toilet. But the movie experience in the cinema and at home are of course completely different. Not because the content is different, but the channel you use is different. McLuhan explains that media all have their own characteristics. And these characteristics embed themselves in the experience. If I tell you a joke uh, in your face, it will be different than if I send it by text message. That's why, according to McLuhan, we should study the way specific channels change and form our culture. New media, for instance, will by their very nature always disrupt the status quo because they allow for new ways of communicating and new ways of shaping reality. Technologies, according to McLuhan in his groundbreaking book The Gutenberg Galaxy, are not only things we use to make life easier, they actually reinvent us as people. For instance, the printing revolution, made possible by the innovation of the printing press, completely changed the way people interacted, how they formed ideas and shared cultural values and truths. With every large media revolution, like the printing revolution, the rise of the newspaper and television, mankind was culturally reinvented. New media allowed for new ways for people to talk to each other, to connect, new ways to pass the time, new ways to give meaning to the world around us and explore the difficult question of who we are. McLuhan predicted in 1962 
that the rise of television and computers usher in an electronic age that will again force society to restructure itself, to deal with issues like increased feelings of uncertainty, social fragmentation and globalization. I would like to discuss these topics with you in our next chapter.